is taught. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today we've got a bit of a different one for you. This is really exciting. We're going to teach you how to create pixel art really simply, really easily. Now I'm doing this in a wicked bit of software called Marmoset Hexels. Now let me get this out of the way. This is not a sponsored video at all in any way. I just think this software is great. Right now you can get it at half price. I'm not sure if that's still going to be the case when I upload this, but even at full price it's only $50 and it can do phenomenal things. Um, however, Having said that, you can do what we're going to do in this uh, tutorial in any software that you want. You can do it in Photoshop, you can do it in TruePix, you can do it in whatever, anything, really, it doesn't matter. I just use Marmoset Hexels because it's built for pixel art or isometric art, um, and it works really, really well. So I'm going to create a new file, 48 by 48 pixels, just like grandma used to school you with in Pong, like it says here, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to hit create. And what this does is it creates us a palette um, a sorry, a canvas, um, which is just 48 pixels by 48 pixels. Now I can reduce this by using the document window over here and I am going to do so. I'm going to reduce it to 16 by 16. Um, and you can just see all of the shortcuts and things are very similar to Photoshop. Now, if you were doing this in Photoshop, which probably most of you are, all you've got to do is create a um, canvas that is 16 by 16 pixels and then make sure you're on the pencil tool, not the pen tool. And apart from that, you can pretty much follow along. I'm going to show you some of the cool things that you can do within Marmoset though. But like I said, this isn't a tutorial for Marmoset, so I'm not going to go into the specifics of using this software. It's just going to be about pixel art in general. Now there's two types of pixel art that most people are familiar with, that's 8-bit and 16-bit. 8-bit uh, is sort of NES days and 16-bit is SNES days. Um, so original Legend of Zelda would be 8 pixels by 8 pixels per character. Um, and things like A Link to the Past or Super Metroid would be 16 by 16 pixels per character. I have actually created something already, um, which is something we're going to be trying mimicking today. Uh, I basically did a zombie idle state. So let me just bring that up for you. Uh, here it is. Um, and I created this in Mums at Hexels and I animated it as well. Now, step one, we're going to be drawing this guy. Step two, we're going to be animating him. But I'm going to do it again from scratch. Um, I'm probably not going to copy this dude uh, exactly. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is decide what character you're drawing. Like I said, we're going to draw our little zombie dude. Um, and we're also going to use a very limited color palette. Um, purely because pixel art was made mainly in the days when they did have limited um, color palettes, 16 bit sort of colors. Um, so we're gonna sort of stay true to that. Now here's a cool thing you can do in Marmoset Hexels with the palette. If you choose a color, say for example, the color of the skull, like so. And then I go a few over and I choose a dark color that I want for the shading of the skull, maybe this. I can actually click and drag between them and it creates gradients between those colors. Now, obviously, all you need to do is just create it manually. It's up to you. Um, so it's really just a case of making sure you keep all of your elements of your pixel character separate and tackling them one at a time. Um, you may be able to hear my cat attacking her food tower in the background there. Terribly sorry if you can. Now, I'm happy with this document. OK, I'm going to give it a transparent background just because we're going to be using some dark colors. Um, and I'm going to go over to glow and turn it off because for some reason it puts a glow on it by default. And then I'm going to head to the preview tab, which is incredible because it means whatever I draw, it's just going to preview it there for me in its entirety. OK. Now, next step then is to make sure we've got layers for each of our sections. So like you said, very similar to Photoshop. Um, I'm just going to call this layer head and I'm going to start drawing my head. Now, you've got to be aware that this is going to be a small sprite. Like I said, we're only really working with 16 pixels, so you don't want to oversize anything. Now, I'm just going to sort of drag in my head here into a sort of rough shape that I think is going to be OK. Um, Actually, let's work on a 32 by 32 grid. I think that works a bit better. So it gives us a bit more room to play around, all right? Um, which gives me a good chance to demonstrate the moving tool here. And I'm just going to position that head roughly where I want it. Perfect. OK, so like I said, just start blocking in your main elements to your character. So I'm going to make my guy's head just a little bit bigger. Like that, and that'll do. And now I know that that's roughly what my head's going to look like. I'm then going to create a new layer, but I need a bit more extra room. So I'm actually going to drag this panel out here and separate it so that I can work with a bit more of my screen. I'm just going to add a new layer, and I'm going to call this one body. Like I said, we're just literally drawing pixels. So you can do this in any software that you want. I just happen to like this one. Okay, I'm going to 
choose a highlight color. Uh, I'm going to choose a shadow color. And I'm going to generate the ones in between. And then I'm going to choose my lightest one. And I'm just going to start working this body in. Let's have him be a bit thinner this time. And I'm just going to overlap this body a little bit. But let's have him have a really hunched back like this. Now, obviously, this is a particular style of pixel art. If you wanted more of a classic sort of Mega Man style, you'd probably work with your outlines rather than blocking the colors in. Um, it's the same process, apart from you're just doing outlines rather than colors, okay? Gonna give this guy some arms. And I'm just gonna do these in a separate color just so I can see them. And I'm gonna do the one arm up ready to attack like this, with the front coming down like that. Okay, remembering of course that you are going to want to view this at the size it's actually going to be used. Um, because otherwise you could be working on these details for a very long time that just simply nobody's going to see, um, unfortunately. It's as simple as that. So make sure you don't spend any time, or waste any time rather, fiddling with details that aren't relevant. That's why it's good to have that preview window open because it gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like when it's a bit smaller, okay? Now these aren't the final colors, like I said, I'm literally just blocking this character in at the moment. We're probably gonna come back through and refine him a bit as well. And I'm gonna go for a more simple style than in the last one as well. I'm not gonna give him big ass feet. I'm just gonna give him little pointy feet, okay? Then I'm gonna go back to my arms and I'm just gonna draw in some horrible claws. Now, when it comes to things like claws, you're gonna to wanna to consider that you can't just draw a straight line, otherwise you get these weird bumps like that. So you really have to be quite selective with where you place your, your pixels, essentially. Um, otherwise, you do just get weird lumpy messes, especially when you're working in 16-bit um, or lower. So I'm just gonna bring this guy around like that. I think that looks pretty good for the block colors. Okay, so I'm happy with that. It's now time to start working in the shadows, the details, the features, things like that. So I'm gonna grab my head and on the same layer, because it is fairly simple, I am just gonna start working in some um, details. So I've decided that my light source is coming through this way, um, which means that we need to shade the opposite side of the body. Um, now with pixel art, lighting can be as important or as unimportant as you want. Um, I quite like trying to work with it. I'm not sure if I'm any good at it, but I give it a go. Um, I find the best thing to do is have four colors per area that you want and work with the second lightest as your base color, as I'm doing now, and then have two layers of shadow and then a layer of highlights so that you can just get a really nice sort of feel to your, uh, to your character. Now, I am going to drop in some black eyes, but I probably will make them red actually. Red's going to look a bit better. So I'm going to give myself a nice bold red for the eyes, drop that in like so. And then what I'm going to do is come in and add a bit of shadow underneath. Probably not that dark, probably just one layer darker than whatever the current one is. Like so, that looks quite good. I'm quite happy with that for the head. Uh, I'm just going to flatten out that tooth there so that actually looks like a tooth. Um, so I'm just going to work on the body now and it's sort of a similar thing. Understand what shape you're working with. So this is sort of like a ball here, a, a sphere with a sort of cylinder on top of it, meaning that you could give them a little bit of a belly if we added some shading in, um, or we could just have sort of one big pear shaped piece of shading, which I quite like the idea of. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to hide every other layer and I'm just going to go through and shade in my character. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to scribble, um, I could go through with my um, paintbrush or magic brush tool, um, select the different areas of my body like this, and then go back to my brush tool and I can sort of scribble to my heart's content. Um, or you can take it a bit slower. Now, bear in mind, I am doing this with a mouse. Um, usually I'd be doing it with my um, graphics tablet pen, but what I wanted to do was illustrate that it's not at all necessary for pixel art. That's the one thing I love about pixel art is how accessible it is. Um, literally anyone with a computer, or not even a computer, you can get mobile apps nowadays. Uh, literally anyone with access to any kind of technology can make pixel art. And it's so much fun to make that I think anyone that has it should, you know? Um, it's like a really interesting, um, really unique way of creating characters. Uh, now what I did here was forgot my own advice and didn't use the second darkest one. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight color in down here 
so that I can highlight his belly area. Okay. Now, here's the thing. If I didn't want to do that, what I could do is a process called dithering, which is where you sort of alternate your colors in order to generate something that, when you look at it, looks like a third color, but it's not really. For example, if I were to undo what I just did there with that fifth color, and in fact, remove it from the palette entirely. Um, with my second to darkest color, what I can do is bring it back a little bit. Oops, excuse me. Bring it back a little bit like so, okay? And then use a dithering process by which I take the alternative squares like this, for example, and I'm leaving these ones uh, lighter. And by doing that, what you get is a sort of half fade um, effect that means you can fool people into thinking there's a different um, color in there when there's not really. I'll do the same here. Say, for example, if we dithered some of this black out a little bit further, like so, just coming in on those opposites leaving alternate spaces. You can see that when that's very small, it'll look shade more shaded than it is. So when you add things like the rest of the body on top of it, it looks quite interesting and quite detailed, even though you're only using four shades of the color, okay? Leave that body as it is, I think, for now. Um, and I'm just gonna disengage this and bring my arms back in and do the shading on them. So like, as you can tell, it's quite a simple process um, making pixel art which is what I love about it. You can really just do what you want. Now there'll be diehard fans out there which tell you there are strict rules and there are, and it's good to know what they are, if only so you can break them. Um, I, for example, probably am breaking all the rules right now. Probably not by choice, I'll admit, probably through lack of knowledge, but uh, <clears throat> if you're happy with the result, then you're happy with the result. It's as simple as that. Um, there's no reason why it isn't perfectly acceptable. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure, remembering where my light source is, but also remembering that you want a bit of texture in your character. So for example, I know that I want the bottom of these claws to be a bit dirty, um, leading out to lighter towards the end, so it actually looks like claws tipped with horrible fingernails, as opposed to just getting lighter, like so. Okay, perfect. Let's bring the rest of it back in, see how that looks. Not too shabby. Let's deal with the legs now then, the last layer. Just gonna remove, oops, remove <clears throat> the sight on those. And for this one, I might get my magic brush tool and just go to town. So this one's got two light sources. It's got the light coming through here, but it's also got the shade from his big old belly as well. So we know that these are gonna be dark no matter what, like right underneath his legs there. Then I'm probably gonna dither out a little bit. So let's just check that that's the right color. Yeah, let's make all that the darkest shade. Okay, and then I'm gonna dither these out just a touch. So full block of that second darkest, and then some alternating blocks of the second lightest, and then full the second lightest, going back down to the one shade darker again to give them a bit of feet, essentially. Okay, do the same thing here, and then give them some feet. Perfect. In fact, let's just do complete darkest on the bottom there. So it looks like he's uh, actually got feet that are defined. And that's a big thing, actually. Um, defining a character's feet, like this, for example, would clearly say that they're feet more than they're just the end of the black sticks. Not terribly important. However, because you're working with such a small area, um, one or two pixels really can make an incredible difference to your artwork. Um, for example, like I just said with the legs, if I were to create two little nubbins that represent his feet, already those feet and that character stands out more from the background than it did earlier, okay? Um, now I could go through and add the vines like I did on this guy, um, but I'm gonna try and make him a little bit different. Instead, we're probably gonna add um, like a belt, like a skull belt or something that mimics his um, real belt up there. So we're gonna go above the body, we're gonna create another layer called belt. And this is really the bit which is then up to you. Um, you can do whatever you want with your character. 
this is what I was saying earlier. Um, people say there are rules and there are rules, but because it's such a simple process, feel free to break them because if it doesn't work, you haven't wasted really any time. That's the way I look at it. Um, I would give him sort of red eyes down here, but I think that'll be distracting too much from his, uh, he's got like a, <laughs> I didn't quite realize it's gonna be like a crotch skull. Uh, I think that'd distract too much from his um, eyes on his head. So therefore I'm just gonna imply that they're there with shading, okay? So I'm gonna bring those in like this. Get the lightest one there. And we're just gonna round this skull off a little bit, like so. And then I could do a darker red belt. That might look quite nice. So I only want a single shade. Maybe, maybe two shades. And what I'll do is I'll just bring this belt up and around like this. Might even bring it around his body. Does that look good? Yeah, that looks okay. If we bring this side around as well. And then we can give it a little bit of shading where the light hits it. Like so. Perfect, I think that guy looks pretty good. Now, this is where you can see the importance of the preview window because where you've got this grid over your character, it's kind of hard to tell what he's gonna look like as a whole. And that's why you have this preview window open. It looks really good. Um, it's a really easy way to see what your character is gonna look like in situ, like in situation. So um, in terms of creating the character, that's pretty much it. The key things to remember are keep it really simple. Make sure that you've got each of your character's elements on a different layer. This will help a lot when it comes to animating. Um, make sure that you use a simple, bold color palette. Like here, for example, I've used 13 colors. No, sorry, eight, nine, 10, 11 colors. Um, but I really, if I wanted to and take the time, I could have used seven and dithered more and it would have worked just as well. But these days it's more, more of an artistic choice than it is a limitation of the hardware. So it's completely up to you. Um, remember your light sources and just remember to keep it nice and simple and feel free to experiment. This is a perfect thing about pixel art. Um, so next week what we'll be doing is animating this guy, uh, probably giving him a bit of an idle stance. Um, and uh, you know, you can see in like characters in games, they never stand still. They're always sort of bouncing up and down. We'll do something like that. Um, and then I've got a few more pixel um, based tutorials to work through depending on whether or not you guys like it. So do let me know in the comments below, do let me know on the Discord, things like that, if it's what you see more of. Also let me know if you wanna see a software specific tutorial. I tried to keep this as vague as general in terms of the software because it can really apply to anything. But if you do like Marmoset Hexels, um, let me know and I'll see if I can do a tutorial specifically on that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put his head there. That looks a little bit better. Cool, that's it. I'll see you next week, guys. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.